Okay, it's been a little bit of a busy week. It's hard to believe that today is only Wednesday. <laughs> I feel like I've packed a week's worth of work into three days. Um, but today, my students are engaging in some learning stations for our unit on light. Um, so we're in the explore stage of the five E's, and so my students are going to be looking at a whole bunch of different stations that relate to the electromagnetic spectrum, the visible spectrum, and then they'll be also doing some calculations with properties of light. Um, I have to get all of that started, so um, I'm going to actually set up the stations. I'll show you what they look like. And then what I think I'll do is I'll talk a little bit about how I start out the light unit so that you have a better idea of like how we got to this point and then where obviously I'm going to next. So give me a couple minutes. I'll show you how I set the stations up and then I'll talk to you a little bit about that. I just finished up setting up the stations and believe it or not, it is seven o'clock in the morning. I have about a half hour before I have to go to my duty. So I thought I would show you what the activity looks like. And then of course, I'll go through it with my students today. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about how it went later. But every single time I do a set of stations with my students, I require every station. So this takes, I would say about anywhere between two to three 50 minute class periods. Now, to be fair, I already introduced light and how light is made by using my phenomenaling activity um, where my students are using magnets as an analogy for how light is created and I have a couple of videos on how I've done this in the past and you know I have I'll I'll probably just link them down below so that you can access them if you're interested in on what phenomenaling is. But basically the idea is that students have to engage in phenomena and create models of them. And I provide scaffolding to help them do that. Um, so we've already kind of had our jumping off point where the students were exploring a phenomenon. And now we get into like how we can relate it to what we observe. And that's what really these stations are about. So every single station activity has a set of questions. Now, how we differentiate the honors and the CP level here at our high school is that the students in the CP class do not do any calculations with light as a wave or light as a particle. With CP, we just keep it more qualitative, but in honors, we do calculations with light as a wave, light as a particle, right? E equals H nu, C equals lambda times frequency. Um, and so one of the things that you'll notice in the station set is that I differentiate um, by giving my students the opportunity to engage in some light calculations. Um, so the first page of the honor station set is actually them practicing with light calculations. I also yesterday did a team activity with my students, which is essentially like a poll goal that I wrote about light as a wave and light as a particle. So my honor students engaged in that. And then I assigned an Ed Puzzle video where I go over how to um, solve these problems and give them a little bit more of a foundation and some scaffolding strategies. And that's important because if students aren't really good at math, they really need the help with making sure that they understand what's expected of them and showing the math and showing the work. So that Ed Puzzle video reviewed a lot of the key concepts from the team activity yesterday. And now I'm giving them an opportunity to practice on this first page. This first page is um, technically homework. So my students um, will do this for homework tonight. Um, but tomorrow when they come in, I actually have a station sign that has all the answers to it. And so the plan for tomorrow is I'll be sitting at one of the tables to kind of assist any students that are checking their answers because they will have a quiz on it on Friday. So I like to be able to circulate around the classroom, but I also like to make sure that I can engage one-on-one -on -one with students. So I'm actually making myself part of the station set tomorrow. Um, so that'll be one modification that I do tomorrow. But 
Um, what you're interested in is probably what the actual like stations, what the manipulatives and things are that students are doing look like. So this is station two. As I mentioned, station one is the students doing calculations, but I wanted to show you what the handout looked like that goes along with it. So you can see there's questions that go with everything. Um, I kind of modeled this after more of a Polkle activity in that when the students finish the stations, they check in with me and then I check that their key concepts are good. So I provide keys in here so that it makes it a little bit easier for me to check in with the students. And then as I mentioned with honors, we do a lot more math. So here my students are, they've already learned about dimensional analysis. So be using dimensional analysis to convert the wavelength and then I give them a challenge problem where I ask them to calculate the energy of light when they're given the amount of energy in kilojoules per mole. No, we have not learned about the mole yet but I just give them a, a conversion factor and then that'll come back later on in the school year. As far as the setup for this, you can see I've got the visible spectrum and then I also have a white light source. So these are purchased right off of Amazon. These are in my Amazon um, teacher favorites and I use these all the time for our light unit. And then these spectroscopes, obviously, they can use these to look at it so they can see all the colors of the rainbow. And then I also have these little baskets. I use them all the time to you know, put colored pencils in and all different types of things, but I love these. These are also in my Amazon teacher favorites if you're interested and you wanted to see what those are. They're actually pretty inexpensive and they held up really, really well. I've had them for years and years at this point. This is station three about the emission spectra. So with station three, the students are provided with the visible spectrum again. They've, they need color pencils for this station, and then they have to scan that QR code. So I love using the CK12 Plixes. The Plixes are so simplistic, but it really helps students to visualize the content. And you'll notice that, you know, you may say, wow, you have the visible spectrum here and the visible spectrum there. And it's like, yeah, because I like to present concepts multiple ways so that there's something that the students can pick up on. I mean, obviously, when we finish the station set that's when we'll tie everything together but I find by presenting the concept in multiple ways my students are able to hold on to something right they can gather something from that station even if it's not quite accurate that's something that we can fix when we do our notes the following class period after our stations. So in this station set, my students will be looking specifically at the emission spectra. They'll be asked to draw the emission spectrum for these elements. Um, so it's pretty simple. I want to say this is a little bit of a longer station because there are quite a few um, parts to this. But again, the key concepts is for me to review with them, make sure they have the right answers. And then we'll, uh, we'll kind of go from there and I'll kind of know what they're struggling with. So when we talk in class, when we do notes, I'll be able to have the opportunity to talk with them about these questions. And then finally, station four looks at the Bohr model for hydrogen. This is a not a plix. This one's a little bit more involved, so it's more of a simulation. But this one's really easy. There's not any um, equipment that's needed. They just need the station sign, so they just can the QR code, and that'll take them to the simulation. And then, as usual, I've got my questions here. This station primarily focuses on absorption and emission, and the goal of this station is for students to understand that when energy is absorbed, the electron is going to move further away. When energy is released, energy is going to be released as light. And then this one is a pretty short station. There's only like one page to this, so that then that back is blank. Um, but my goal today is for the students to at least complete one of the stations and then any time that's left over they can work on those calculations that I was talking about earlier. So that's it for me right now. I think I'm going to grade some of the homework that I had students submit last night. So that's all on Google Classroom. Not very exciting, but I'll work on that and then I'll check in with you after my second period class to tell you how the stations went. I just finished with my period two honors chem class and these stations, mwah, they are on point. I have to tell you, I, it is so satisfying as a teacher to create materials that support student learning and it actually works. It is so gratifying, you know, besides being able to help my students understand something really difficult like chemistry, it makes me feel so good that when I create something, I write something, it helps the students to get it and, it, and they really, really get it. And I, um, I just, I, I'm just kind of relishing in the thought of like how 
it means so much to me to know that I have the ability to create these resources that can help my students make this topic a little bit more manageable because light and talking about the phenomena can be very challenging for students. And so today was just a wonderful start to the day. They did a absolute phenomenal job. See what I did there? Um, they did an amazing job on the stations. I really feel that they got it. And one thing that I do with the stations is I like the students to check in with me at all the different key points in the activity. So as I showed you, the keys really indicate a key concept, a key takeaway. And the students just did so incredibly well with these key concepts. And so tomorrow they'll be finishing up the stations. I think it was a very, very successful day. I do have one more period to go. So I'll probably do that with the next class and then I'll check in with you one more time to tell you how it went. For right now, I have to finish up. I have to actually finish my order. Um, so I'm gonna be ordering like chemicals and equipment and things that I need for this year. I'm a little bit behind. I did place an order last year, but I have to finish up my order this year. So I'm gonna go do that. But I'll check in with you guys in a little bit to tell you how my second class went. Well, I had a great four or five class. They did awesome with the stations just like period two so i am psyched i feel like this was a wonderful station set that i put together for the students they actually when i was going through and looking at their key questions they did really well with it and it was amazing because they were able to most of the teams were able to finish two stations in the one period so that was pretty impressive Tomorrow, you might wonder, like, what is it going to look like when I'm part of the station? So all I have is a station sign that has the answers to the homework questions. So I'm going to put these out at one of the tables, and I'm just essentially going to sit there and support the students because they'll have a quiz on this on Friday. So this is all I'm going to provide them. That way, it kind of encourages them to make sure that they show the work appropriately, and I'll check in with them to make sure they have everything that they need. Um, but that'll be tomorrow. And then I'm actually concerned that they might finish a little early. So for my early finishers, I do have this electromagnetic spectrum card sort that I made. So this is another thing that I was thinking about giving the students tomorrow. Um, so I made these cards. I'll just quickly show you what they look like. So they have all different types of electromagnetic radiation on them. And they have to basically match it up with the types. So you can see like talking about microwaves right so we've got so I've got these cards that they can match and then they can match like what type of a ah, they, sorry they can match what type of electromagnetic radiation it is so that'll be fun for them and then there's a QR code answer key that I'm going to give them so once they are able to kind of organize where these go and kind of match them to the correct electromagnetic radiation then I'll give them the answer key and this is a really cool electromagnetic spectrum that I absolutely love I use it year after year and it just really does a nice job of showing all the different types of electromagnetic radiation that students come in contact with in their lives outside of the classroom so that is going to be kind of like an earlier finishers thing type of enrichment thing so that um, if students have extra time that might be some a little fun thing for them to engage in well, I think that's it for me. I am going to finish getting set up for my AP chemistry class. We are working on thermochemistry. And if you are an AP chemistry teacher out there and you watch this channel because you want some inspiration for how to teach AP chem, you should leave a comment down below because I feel like there's not as many AP teachers out there. And so I don't usually post as much about what I'm doing in AP. But if you are watching this channel because you want to know more about AP chem and how I teach it, you should definitely leave a comment. That way I can sprinkle in some more AP video related stuff into what I'm showing you all. Um, but either way, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've gleaned some inspiration for some really easy activities that you can do in your class. CK12 Plixes and Sims are an absolute staple and they are amazing and 100% free. The only thing is you will have to make some questions for them or you could just use the questions that I created. So if you're interested in what I've created, you can check the link down below. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you all very soon.